Hello bird watching fans, I'm Kevin Ripa and this is my Sands 3 Minutes Max. Today we're going to talk about saving your butt as opposed to forensics. What? Well, last week we talked a lot about RAID. Now today I'm not going to talk so much about forensics as I'm going to talk about failure of RAID and some of the considerations we have to have. Now let me tell you a little bit about my experience running a data recovery lab and uh, coming across RAID arrays. RAID arrays show up in a data recovery lab uh, almost always because of the same thing. Now you might think to yourself, why would a RAID array show up in a data recovery lab? That's the whole reason we have it is for redundancy. Well, you're right. The problem is most RAID arrays, whether they be in a SAN like a Synology or a QNAP or, or in a server room somewhere, are such that when one drive dies, nobody's around to hear it die. Now, when a drive dies, you're typically going to have an audible alarm, a beep, beep, beep. Problem is, again, nobody's around to hear it beep because it's locked in a closet. So they don't realize that the RAID is failing until the second drive dies. Well, that's too late. So much for wasting all your money on a RAID 5. So here is how you should set it up. I haven't come across a RAID array yet or a RAID uh, uh, setup yet where it didn't also allow for the uh, feature of emailing somebody when a drive is in a failure state. So set that up so you get an email when the drive dies. And then the next problem is nobody keeps extra drives. So a drive dies, somebody resets the alarm and says, okay, I know I need a drive, I'll get to that tomorrow. Or I'll get to that later today, but today turns into tomorrow and you still don't have the new drive. A second drive fails in a RAID 5 configuration and again, you're in a data loss situation. So when you're setting up a RAID 5, always buy an enclosure with more slots than you need right now. And then buy one or two extra hard drives more than you need right now. You can either put them in the array and keep them as hot swappable. That way if a drive dies, the whole RAID manages the failover. It automatically grabs one of those drives that's just sitting waiting and repurposes it and starts writing data to it so you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, the other alternative is buy a couple of extra drives when you buy all of the drives in your array. Just put them on top of the array or on the shelf beside it so that when one dies, you can pull it out and put another one in right away. Why? Because if that drive died, chances are every other drive in that array is ready to go now because they were all built in the same batch at the factory. So hopefully that will save you a little bit of grief down the road because the last thing you want to do is pay for data recovery on a RAID array. Extremely expensive. So in the meantime and in between time, that's it. Another episode of 3 Minutes Max.